Good morning, folks. We've got a solar eruption. New observers learned a channel-long lesson yesterday after the news, and we're not done with our punching bag either. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun showed a bit of increase in activity, and then on the south near the end, a filament rips away. Looking in 304 angstroms, we see the limb eruptions actually started the uptick, and at the end, it's a large southern filament exiting the corona, luckily heading due south. This eruption will miss our planet. The solar wind at Earth continues its slightly elevated status, bringing minor geomagnetic unrest overnight. And we're also beginning to watch the departure of the southern sunspots. They are growing, but taking a simpler beta magnetic class towards the limb, and then we'll be out of view. Up on the north, the next sunspot is incoming, but he's all alone. He'll need some help if he wants to flare up there. A note for those who saw both the last two days' news, November 27th and 28th. New viewers watched us pull a rare look at the Blood Echo wind map from QuakeWatch.net, and then the next day you saw a big earthquake strike that region. Dozens of new viewers who never saw us do that before tried sharing and screaming that people are predicting earthquakes and you quickly realized nobody cares. Welcome to the world of the observers. Same when the peer-reviewed journals unfold like the exact hypotheses we'd given months before in cosmology, catastrophism, and especially in climate. Folks, the Climate Playlist last four videos on our channel was technically a separate mini-series. We broke down the entire atmosphere forcing and attribution points, and in part four, we went over the attribution they like to give to humans for global warming. Folks, this new paper makes the exact same claim, that humans account for 100% of global warming. But you will recall, part four used that starting block and then carved and shaved and extracted everywhere they failed to see reality or even the peer-reviewed papers in the very same journals. This new paper made every same mistake. Some members of the field are happy to just live in a fantasy land, and the journal editors are happy to let them do it. So let's go over some more hits here as we start where the miniseries started, the upper atmosphere. Another one on the thermospheric control, but critical because it's about irradiance forcing, not particle forcing or field coupling, missing things inside and outside of their favorite realms. Then we step down from the thermosphere to the mesosphere in the D region of the ionosphere to find the powerful flare forcing on that layer. This not only is the other part of the upper atmospheric solar forcing, but it's equator focused, one of the ways that the sun can hit all latitudes. And speaking of that, throughout the series we went over how the particle forcing gets to the equatorial region as well, heavily focused on the auroral excitement and various avenues of transferring that energy to lower latitude and equatorward propagation. In a paper that won't go into print until January, we see more on the results of that equator word forcing, the equatorial ionization anomaly. About half the field thinks it's a random separate phenomena that just happens to enhance after the main phase of space weather impact. In reality, it's just the time it takes the auroral forcing to juice up the tropical latitudes through those mechanisms we've been discussing. And last but not least, remember folks, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if it's CO2, the sun, the weakening magnetic field, or the volcanic inactivity that's making it warmer. A warmer world triggers the Earth's safety mechanisms that begin the ice ages. Here we see that an area of Greenland is readying to discharge at record levels. Folks, this is the same level of cold climate bomb as the Beaufort Gyre, which we're still waiting for, by the way, with ice and cold freshwater melt continuing to desalinate and shut down the heat transport in the oceans, bringing the cold. We greatly appreciate your support. Our store is closing end of the week for the holiday break, otf.cells.com. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.